Welcome. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Luxverb, FL Studio's Deluxe Reverb plugin. Why is it deluxe and not just verb? Stick around to find out. Luxverb is an advanced algorithmic reverb based on clever use of delay lines rather than traditional acoustic space modeling designs. Sounds complex, but essentially Luxverb allows manipulations of the reverb tail that would be impossible without additional processing using traditional approaches. In addition to tried and true reverb sounds. Let's walk through the main panels. You can control what is sent into the reverb in the input panel. Wet gain controls the level you're sending into the input of the reverb path. Great for reverb throws, where you automate this control to quickly rise up at the end of a sound, so the reverb becomes the main focus. There is a limiter built into the reverb input. When you're hitting its ceiling, this control will flash red, prompting you to turn the input down if you do not want to change its dynamics on the way in. High cut attenuates high frequencies being sent into the reverb. The value shows the cutoff frequency in Hertz. Low cut is the most useful one of the two input filters as it attenuates low frequencies entering the reverb. It's an important control to avoid adding too many low frequencies into the reverb, because these quickly build up and muddy the mix, making it sound boomy. You can turn the reverb off when it's not needed to save CPU using this switch here. This will stop all sound in the reverb unit. Decay affects the length of the reverb tail. approximately in seconds to the minus 60 decibel level, unless you're using the feedback section, then all bets are off. Brightness controls the presence of high frequencies in the reverb tail. Do you want a bright? Or dark space? Turn down for softer, duller sounding spaces and up to emulate harder surfaces. Adjust the size to change the spacing between individual echoes in the reverb. Technically, this is used to convey a sense of room size. Longer distances between echoes mean the room is larger. But unlike in real reverb, this size change does not change the length of the reverb much, if at all. Move this parameter while the reverb is already happening for smooth but drastic pitch changes in the reverb. Diffusion adds simulated acoustic diffusers in the input path before the reverb that break up the regularity and predictability of those echoes. In essence, this can make the reverb sound smooth versus grainy. Think of it like control over how many extra objects are in a space. Character determines the structure of the echoes that make up the reverb response. Set midway for the smoothest and most diffuse reverb tail. Use smaller values for a grainy sounding reverb where you can hear individual echoes. Using larger values causes the reverb arrivals to bunch up, creating a slapback effect. The overall effect of this control is more pronounced when the size control is high. Pre-delay is the time it will take for the reverb to start making sound after input in milliseconds. Synchronize it to tempo here. Modulation amp and modulation frequency decide the frequency and amplitude of the reverb modulation LFO. This will introduce slight pitch changes in the reverb tail and can lead to a more artificial 80s sounding reverb overall.
The freeze mode switch allows for infinite length reverb tails. Due to Luxverb's design, the feedback path of the delay lines can be sustained indefinitely. You can automate this switch, of course, and you should. Normal acts like a standard reverb tail without extra feedback. Freeze cuts the input into the reverb and sustains the reverb sound at the moment Freeze was selected. The sound will sustain until Freeze is deselected. Sustain works almost like Freeze, but the input to the reverb is left open, so the sound will continue to build up as audio is added to the mix. HQ toggles between sample interpolation modes in the buffer. When turned on, you get higher fidelity with more sustained high frequencies, at the expense of some additional CPU usage. When turned off, interpolation is grittier and the high frequencies won't sustain as long. The feedback panel can be turned on here. This controls the reverb's internal feedback lines and allows pitch shifting the feedback for creating shimmer and related reverberation effects. Simply turn up the feedback gain and set the pitch shift slider to your desired note. And each delayed copy is pitch shifted again for instant cloudy shimmer reverb. Feedback is injected into the signal chain after the input low and high cut filters, pre-delay and diffusion step of the reverb but before the remainder of the reverb engine. The main components of the reverb engine are included inside the feedback loop. The feedback gain also turns red when you're hitting its built-in saturation, so turn it down if you do not want to distort inside the feedback loop. Like the input panel, there are low and high cut filters. These, however, are dedicated to the feedback path and will not affect the input to the reverb. So, each delay loop is progressively filtered by these filters. You may have heard this effect in a dub delay before, only this time it's happening inside a reverb. The delay parameter is applied to the output before being fed back into the loop. Works in milliseconds, or if your tempo sync it, it will read in steps. You can mix in the reverb processing into the feedback path with the reverb mix, the mix of wet, reverberated and dry, non-reverberated feedback into the loop. The higher the mix, the more smoothed out the feedback signal will become over time, as it passes repeatedly through the reverb. The dry and wet sliders should be familiar from previous reverb designs. They show reverb, wet and unaffected dry signal levels in decibels. The output also runs through a peak type filter, like in an EQ, specifically for the wet signal only. You can set its gain, frequency and bandwidth here. The envelope section allows you to modulate the reverb decay or output wet parameter based on the dry input or a sidechain signal. Both parameters are intended to allow you to control how the reverb output decays. Use this section to create gated reverb without actually using a gate. Threshold sets the threshold in decibels above which the envelope signal starts to react to the input. Scale controls how much the input signal envelope is applied to the modulation target. You can use positive values to accentuate the reverb with the input signal and negative values to duck it according to the input. Low cut will high pass the detection circuit of the envelope, removing the impact low end sounds have on the envelope. Like the two other low cuts, this displays cutoff frequency in Hertz. Offset is a static offset to scale the parameter being affected by the envelope. I have the envelope set to wet level, so turning this up gives me more wet level as represented by the graph. Attack controls the attack time on the envelope follower, meaning the time the envelope takes after crossing the threshold to reach full intensity. Decay controls the release time of the envelope follower. 
Smaller values lead to the target parameter returning to the set value quickly after the input signal level decays, whereas larger values cause the envelope follower to slowly drift back down to the input signal amplitude level. Smooth decides the amount of smoothing applied to the envelope input signal in milliseconds. Helps to prevent jittery envelope modulation with fast attack and decay parameters. In the display panel, you will see a spectrogram, a waveform visualization, or both, of the post reverb plugin output. Overlaid on top are graphs representing wet level in green or decay time in red, envelope threshold in orange, and envelope output in blue. These are useful to monitor when you're making changes to the envelope parameters. So, what does a gated reverb sound like? If you're into 80s popular music, or the more recent nostalgia-driven genres of synthwave, retrowave, or cyberpunk, you certainly heard this effect on the snare drum at some point. Traditionally, you would put a reverb plugin on the snare of your drum kit, and then use a gate plugin afterwards, so you can have a big sounding reverb that opens and closes as you desire. With Luxverb, that sound can be achieved in a single plugin, using the envelope modulator on the wet level. So let's set Luxverb to be a huge space and modulate the wet level like so. Shimmer Reverb is a reverb sound that is made using a pitch shifter of some kind in the wet path. Typically, that is done by sending the audio out in parallel and then using a pitch shifter and a reverb on the send track. Luxverb can also do this in a single plugin. Simply turn on the feedback and turn the gain, delay, and pitch to your liking. One really cool use case for frozen reverb is as an artificial sustain pedal. Let's link the freeze mode to three keys on a keyboard controller. Now, every time this note is played, Luxverb will switch to sustain mode. You can, of course, add this to pianos, which is the obvious choice for that option. But it really shines on instruments that would otherwise have no way of, shall we say, overriding their volume envelope and sustaining forever. Closely related to fake sustain pedals are reverb throws. Essentially, you set up a big reverb and, well, throw up the input fader for the wet path. This can be super helpful if you're making any kind of bass music and want to give your cool bass sound a sense of space without the reverb showing up where it's not needed. There 
is so much more you can do with this plugin, but we don't want this to be a feature length video. Instead, we'll encourage you to find out for yourself what else Luxverb is capable of. We hope this video is enough to get you on the right track, however. Don't forget to check out the video information below to read up on Luxverb in the manual and grab the demo projects we made for this video. Happy music making!